We come this night with expectant hope, in faith, and complete joy that we will be there to witness the gift of Christ Jesus being born in a manger. Tonight, we join with the shepherds, according to the Gospel of Luke, to hear the angels cry out and to go with haste to that place where Jesus Christ is born. Tonight, we who keep vigil will be rewarded because these past four weeks of Advent, specifically three weeks and one day this year, we now move out of the Advent season and into the time of Christmas where we celebrate the beauty of our God becoming one of us. This morning, I shared with you three pre-gifts for Christmas. Tonight, I invite you to participate in owning three gifts that we can bring to the Christ child. The first, the gift of humility. The gift of humility. We can translate, define, and understand humility in so many different ways, shape, and form. One can achieve the highest pinnacle of accolades and awards, and yet one lives in such a manner you would never know what he or she has achieved. Only those within the person's circle will be understanding of what really took place. One can be blessed with certain material things, but yet the way one carries oneself with self-respect does not seem to betray a sense of lording over anyone else. So that genuine sense of humility says, although I have all these blessings from God, I am still journeying as one with you and one like you because that is what Jesus did. But tonight, the gift of humility I'd like us to focus on is the gift of an attitude, the gift of an openness, the gift of a disposition that says, Lord, I hear your voice. Help me to listen and to respond. This morning we heard how the angel appeared to Mary. And she could easily have said, I have my own life to live. We're also familiar with Joseph who could easily have said, I'm an old man, why are you bothering me? And every time we place ourselves in the context of prayer and God speaks with each of us, when God is speaking and asking something of us, what is our disposition? The shepherds in the Gospel of Luke heard the angels declaring glory to God. And they were told what they would find, a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. But guess what? If they told the angel, I am busy. If they told the angel, if I go, if we go, who is going to watch over the sheep? And they are betraying a certain deafness to the voice and the word of God. All who listened, all who responded in humility, all then reaped the blessing of God in ways that they never dreamt of or foresaw. And so for this night, beloved, can we, can we find the courage to bring to the Christ child the gift of humility, a disposition that says, Lord, speak. I not only want to hear and listen, but Lord, I want to say yes. I want to say yes to what you're asking, where you're sending, and what it is you want me to do for you for the glory of your name. Too often, beloved, when God's voice comes to our ears and our hearts, rather than quickly say yes, we may ponder a little, is this for me? You're asking me this, Lord, when so many others are more than capable? But sometimes it goes beyond that. No, that's not my role. No, not at this point in my life. No, I don't think I want to do that. No, Lord, wait until I am ready. All of that we fail to see simply as pride creeping in. Pride goes before a fall. 
when we choose to be deaf to what the Lord is saying, the good things that God has to say and the wonderful direction he wants us to take in our lives, when we choose to be deaf to that, we fail to receive the blessings God has in store for each of us. But if we choose to humbly say, speak, Lord, your servant is not only willing to listen, but also will respond, it is then that humility yields blessings upon blessings. Are we willing and able to take this gift of humility, this spiritual disposition to the Christ child, so that he can speak with us, in us, and through us? The second gift, for to you is born this day in the city of David, a savior. Who is the savior? A mighty king, a mighty lord? Yes, all of that and more. A commander in chief who's going to create war? Probably. But this mighty king has come to reign only from one throne. The throne of the cross. The wood of the manger, as we often reflect on, will one day lead to the wood of the cross. This Jesus has come to save us from our sins. But beloved, we all know the human experience. We can own our sins. We can confess our sins. But are we really and truly able to break away from all our sins? For most of us, it's a lifelong journey. And the deeper we are steeped in those venial and mortal sins, the longer it takes to break away. Some people may have the experience of saying, I used to be addicted to cigarettes, but after hearing how bad it is for my health, or experiencing the effects of it, or seeing the effects on my family and friends, I just one day decided to quit. And now I no longer am a chain smoker or even smoke. But some people have to say, I used to smoke a pack a day. I try to smoke only one or two per day and try to narrow it down as time goes by. Same thing is true of alcoholics. The same thing is true even of drug addicts. The more steep we are in that which destroys our minds, our bodies, our spirits, the longer it takes to recover. The beginning of salvation is to recognize that not only do we have a savior, but that we need to be saved from our sins. Beloved, make no mistake. Too many believers today walk around believing they are not sinners. And yet when they speak, which is a reflection of their hearts and minds, you realize how much this person needs a savior. What then can we do? The second gift, identify just one. One area of darkness, one particular sin, and say to the Lord, my God, my Savior, this is what I need your grace to help me to work on during the season of Christmas and even into the new year. We're not going to be made perfect overnight. We're not going to be perfect because we confess that sin or several sins. But what we can do is to have the courage to face the fact that with all the struggles we have, what is that one particular sin that the Spirit is inviting us to say, this is what I'm going to bring to the Lord? Something of my own weakness. Scripture plainly says, when you are weak, I am strong. When sin abounds, what? Grace abounds even more. Many of our young people are caught up in a culture of viewing pornography, easily accessed on their smartphones or iPads or computers. Many of our adults fail to see how gossiping destroys someone but see it as a right. Many of our own believers say they believe in Jesus, and yet somehow, when they speak, you fail to see the connection with their faith lives. All of us, beloved, are in need of this Savior who has come. 
But in order to please our Savior, we must all own the fact that we are sinners. And I invite you, this night, when you go home, ask the Spirit to speak. What Holy Spirit do you want me to take to the Christ child so that he can save me from this particular sin? If there's any other gift we can glean, it comes from the last line. The angels said, glory to God in the highest and on earth among people with whom he is pleased. Other translations, on whom the favor of God rests. Beloved, when God's favor rests upon us, we are all winners in the circle of life. When the favor of God is upon me, nothing can hold me back. When the favor of God is with me, I am able to stand up for him in any context, time, or circumstance and declare that Jesus Christ truly is my savior. When the favor of God is with me as it is, no element, no force, no experience can ever drag me down. Show the devil that I am a winner, as we often sing. God's favor was on Mary, as we read this morning. God's favor is on every believer, every disciple who says, Yes, speak, Lord. I am hearing. I will respond. Yes, Lord. I see what you're asking me to change. Yes, Lord. Your favor is on me. Help me, Lord, to celebrate life, to celebrate each other, to celebrate you in our lives as you desire. It's beautiful that a joy sign is lit in the churchyard. When God's favor is upon you, nothing can rob you of joy. And that's the joy that we should infect each other with. When people see us, they must see that difference in our lives because the favor of God is on our minds, hearts, bodies, and spirits. And the more we acclaim God, the more we declare his praise, the more we share him with each other, the more his favor will strengthen us and lead us into paths that are truly beautiful and loving. Tonight we give thanks that our Savior has come. He has chosen to favor each of us with his presence. Tonight we sing with the angels, glory to God, our God is truly with us. If there's anything we have to do and can do is to live our lives as gifts to him. To this great God who is truly with us and among us, to him, beloved, be glory and praise forever and ever.